Who's the guy at the bar? Ken. Ken. We, we don't want to. We don't want to wait for Ken. Yeah, Ken. we'll wait for Ken. I mean, and, Ken's worth waiting for. And the nice young lady that's there too. I was wondering if we keep saying Ken. I feel. Oh, they, yeah, What's here that? it is. Okay. Can hear you. Whenever you're ready, Dave. I'm ready. Fading the house music. Yeah. Here we are again. <laughs> Impressive. Was that good? Was yeah, good. that was really nice. It's a nocturne. Uh, well, pre- welcome, everybody, to uh, Story Behind the Story. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Welcome, Phil. How are you? I'm great. Yeah? That's yeah. it? Just great? No, I'm better than great. Better I like than this great. table. I'm going to start working out, see if, just, if, if you I can, can work up it. to lifting this yeah, table. This table will be a very heavy table to lift. Um, and uh, everything's good. We had to skip last month. We did. Uh, yeah, because my wife was in the hospital. There you go. I know. Yeah, but she's out. Wah. She's sitting right over there now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and she can no longer eat tomatoes. So, yeah, that happens. Uh, our pizza intake has gone down dramatically. Yeah. Both of you? So it's, yeah. it's a shared thing. I'm going to have like, pizza uh, later tonight. Shh. Don't tell anybody. What about yeah. Pino? Does Pino count? Where are we? Yeah, we are horrible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, it's nice to have you, to see you again, and uh, really nice that uh, both of our storytellers were available uh, two months in a row. Uh, thank you, guys. Um, and uh, I want to thank Gary, uh, wherever Gary is, Brooks Note, because uh, that's where we are, 426 uh, Petaluma Boulevard, and uh, south? North. 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 Oh, my God. North. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Why does it change? Why can't it just be Petaluma Boulevard? <laughs> you know, yeah. Jay can tell me. Oh, well, we'll, we'll get to Jay we'll telling me. That. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I had never known before. So great. Uh, great to have uh, everybody uh, that is here. And uh, we're going to just ramp up and get rolling. Uh, we are, uh, again, at Brooks Note, we are here the last Wednesday of every month. Uh, and, um, we always have a couple of storytellers and we do a uh, story behind the story and we talk a little bit about the story process and, uh, we're going to listen to a couple stories, actually one at a time and, uh, both at a time would be bad. Don't both you think? at a time. Yeah. I'm just here for the 2021 Pinot from Brooks. Now. Well, you've made an excellent choice. Nicely done. <laughs> Uh, so shall we play Jay's story? Let's, uh, let's listen to Jay Khan's story. You got it. Ooh, that's not how it started. <laughs> it's how it's ending. That's hot stuff. <laughs> Jay Khan. Uh, it's that fading out gummy. I'm up for a Jay. Watch the cord. You got it. The first time in a new space. This is for Rocket. It was a day where I felt absolutely shattered. I felt so lost that I didn't think even God could find me. It was the day that we had to lay him down because he had cancer. And there was nothing that we could do for him. All we could do was hold him and tell him that we loved him And that is, he took his last breath, the only thing that you could hear in the room at the vet was our tears falling and our hearts breaking. I didn't know how I was going to move forward from that day, to be quite honest with you. I remember when I carried him from my wife's truck to his grave underneath the willow tree that he loved to be underneath so much. I just felt like I couldn't start over. You see, Rocket was 125 pounds of muscle and love. He stood about three and a half feet high. He was a beautiful mix of the fierce Rottweiler and the sweet, gentle lad. He had a black body and a white blaze. And I remember when we were living up in Ukiah, we would take him out to Lake Mendocino and we would try to get him into the water and say, Rocket, come on, 
you're a lab. You're supposed to know how to swim. And he'd give me that look that said, I'm drowning. What do you want? Or there'd be a knock at the door. And he'd just lie down and I'd say, Rocket, you're a Rottweiler. Aren't you supposed to be barking and growling? And, and he'd look at me and go, where's my treat? What the hell? But on that day, when we buried him, I realized that, or maybe I felt more like I just didn't have any room to bring home another stray. I just didn't. Have you ever had that moment where you feel like you're just so empty, there's just no room for anything but the grief in that time? And I remember my wife, Linda, and I looking at each other, and we said we just needed to take some time and to start from scratch and to figure out what we wanted to do. And we realized that when you have those moments, they're like a wound on your soul, but life still goes on, and there's somebody else or something else hoping for a warm place to lay its head and to feel safe again. And we found a dog by the name of Sierra because I kind of think in a lot of ways we're all really similar. There's moments where other people bring us into their life like we're astray and all of a sudden you're part of a pack again and you're part of a family. And Linda was looking to at dogs, and I was just going, no, I just don't have it. I felt so, I didn't have it. I just didn't want to go through that journey of falling in love and creating a space for another being and then losing them all over again. But then she said, I want that one. And I said, what do you mean you want that one? She said, that's what somebody told me about you. Get that one. And I went, all right. And we went up to this place up in, right outside of Ukiah, at a dog rescue place. And there was this beautiful, long-haired German shepherd. And she was just lost and alone. And she had been used to force to breed because of her beauty. And nobody cared about who she was as a being. And she played with her other dog, Bandit. I went, no, I don't think so. I'm not sure. And I talked myself out of it, and Linda grumbled, and I, and I thought about it for a while as we drove back down to Santa Rosa, and I realized Linda brought you home. You brought Rocket home. What do you think about bringing this one home, Jay? Maybe you can make a little space in your life for another one. And so we brought Sierra home. And that's the beauty of when you start from scratch with a brand new being because you don't know the gift that they're going to be. And Sierra was, as I said, just lost and she was so scared. I remember she would run out the door and just run around the property because all of a sudden she had everything that she wanted but was terrified at all at the same time. And then over time, she started to relax, and I started to fall in love with her. And then I remember one time, she lay down underneath the willow tree, and she looked at me as if to say, thank you for bringing me here. Because the challenge from when you start from scratch, is to realize you will carry that pain and those wounds forward and how you felt so broken. But when someone looks at you with all that love and all that gratitude, you realize the journey of starting from scratch is the only way to bring them home. And I'm so grateful for that lesson from Rocket and the beauty that Sierra has brought to me and to us. How much I for Jay, everybody.
Nicely done, Jay Con. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, it was a hard story to tell, wasn't it? It was a hard story to tell on multiple levels. One, emotionally. Two, I had thought about the theme before I got there, but I really hadn't put anything together. So in some ways, some of the things that I knew about storytelling beforehand helped me to get through that story and to put it together as I was actually telling it. But emotionally and going through those memories made it especially challenging. So what about storytelling? Uh, what tools did you end up using to get through the story? One of the L beginning things is the pause, is just giving your audience time to take a breath. And in that time when they can take a breath, you can feel what you're feeling and translate that into words. And it's also an opportunity to formulate the words and how you want to bring them forward. So using the pause is really important. The other thing is also having a real solid beginning as I did. And that the beginning creates your ending and it's the arc of the story. So an aspect of storytelling for me is the arc of it. It's the arc of, as some would say, the arc of the hero, the arc of whatever, from begin the beginning to the end, and, and you can fill in the middle. Yeah. And also the other thing is, as I've learned along the way, is to really try to keep the details poignant, but to a minimum. To a minimum, huh? Yeah. Why is that? Well... I remember one time I was at Toastmasters and I was telling some story and it was so detailed late and somebody gave me feedback. It's like, you know, you're laying bricks here, Jay. You don't need to lay all, lay this. What you need to do is just create the framework and let your audience's intelligence and their imagination and their own emotional history build the imagery that you're creating with your words. Okay, nice. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Great. Um, one of the, the phrases that you used that really strikes, uh, that hits me a little bit, uh, I have an older dog. Uh, she'll be 15 on Friday? Uh, yeah, Friday. Um, so tears are falling and hearts are breaking. Uh, it's just a great image a great uh so i realized you didn't have a full form story when you walked in the door that night was that phrase just made up on the spot or was that something that you had worked on before because that's a really good one both okay and the reason why i say both is because i've learned from ray who's going to be your second story explainer as it were <laughs> that that kind of imagery explains that whole moment yeah. without having to go into detail about it. And it, the only sound in the room was our tears falling and our heart breaking. Yeah. And that just adds to the depth and the poignancy. And it's a technique of taking your audience on a journey so that they can connect with the story, not necessarily you as the storyteller, because really the whole point of a story, what I've learned along the way, is to have people emotionally connect with their own internal story. Because when I was looking out into the audience, you know, there were people crying. There were people like, yeah, oh my goodness, you know, this isn't just about my dog. This is about the the person that I knew who had cancer. This is about the mom. You know, so that's what I mean when let the audience create their painting using your words as the brush. You mentioned Toastmasters. Why did you join Toastmasters? I did uh, also, but I, you know, speak for a living or at least used to. Um. A couple reasons. One, 